Good Tuesday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and motorcycles and the kid and the dogs. And wow, looky here, looky here, look at the pond. That's just beautiful. My pond is so cleaned up from that Nutra, Nutri, whatever the hell that little animal is. I was blessed to get that lily pod. Uh, pond really cleaned up. It just looks so nice now, like the good old days. And here we are on a beautiful Tuesday morning, cold, 25 degrees and frosty. The snowman must be on our doorstep because look how everything is frosted over here at the Ice Age TV compound. And as, and as always, thanks for uh, tuning into my channel. Appreciate all the uh, nice comments. Good morning to those that are watching me on a regular basis. And even good morning to those that uh, just maybe decided to check out the channel today. And yeah, it's really sunny out here. So uh, I'm really bundled up today because it's cold. But I've bundled myself up to the new purchase uh, of the Raptor 37 that I finally pulled off. Wow. And uh, it's just incredible how yesterday we had the conversations of the used vehicles. And uh, I thought to myself this morning... We could take that theme into the next theme, which would be the new conversations. I haven't actually had a dedicated, like, new conversation, and thought that would be something new. You know, trying to create new content on a YouTube channel to uh, entertain others, so I actually want to watch the video. That's not easy, so uh, I try my best, and I appreciate all those that support me. So, here we go. Yesterday, we talked about the used vehicles. So, we'll just focus on the new vehicles to kind of keep it simple and get the theme of the channel going and talk about that nice, new, really used Raptor 37. So, here's a new uh, Jeep Grand Wagoneer that I bought this past uh, spring, which I just truly really love, that has that inline-six Hurricane motor, and it's like 500 horsepower. I just love that vehicle. It's a really nice and great vehicle. Um, everybody knows from the, you know, the day before, those I bought used. Even though that Jeep Grand Cherokee is a new model year, I bought it used. So I'm talking about what I bought new. And it's just pretty crazy even for me to stop and think that for a lot of my life, I always wanted to buy like the greatest, latest. Poor little Scouty there. He's got that back foot that's bugging him. And he kind of gets a little better than it gets a little worse. Poor little boy. We have to take you to the doctor. So, uh, so typically I buy things when I was growing up new. It was always about getting something new. I didn't want a used thing. I want a new thing. Um, there's the Mustang Mach E. I bought that new. One of my subscribers was telling me how, you know, wow, I should have waited it out to buy that dang thing because I'm so buried in that thing with all the uh, negative equity. Uh, Bronco was used. Um, the Jeep here, I bought that brand new. Um, the Ford Power Boost, I bought that brand new. So let's see here. For this year, one Wagoneer, two on the Power Boost, and three on the uh, Jeep as far as this year, new. And then I bought the Mustang GT. That was a new purchase. So that's four, right? And then we go in the off. We got to go in the barn. Come on, puppers. There's all the geese talking. We're going to definitely come back out here and talk about the Raptor 37 that took me basically two years to get one of these if you only watch my channel, but okay. Uh, so there's the geese. What's going on there? So, what do you say? Four, one, and then uh, two, three, four. No, it's five. We're at five, right? Wagoneer, Power Boost, two. Um, well, I'll say this year, two, and then Jeep is three, Mustang's four, and then in here, the uh, Plum Crazy's number five. The Mustang Dark Horse number six. So I think that's it. I think so that on cars, I think it was six purchases of new vehicles this year. I'm not talking about what I purchased from last year, this year. And we talked about how uh, yesterday, how many used vehicles have been buying lately. And so he kind of gets around that foot better. You know, he kind of like limps and he doesn't limp. What's going on with that, right? Uh, all right. Get the doggies in. Where's Ginger Baby? Ginger Baby, come on, girl. The little girl, my little girl. Got to get her in. Kiefer's in the house. Locked down. So doesn't create the craziness as usual. Get the garage lights on. If you're not watching my channel, you're like, whoa, poof, magic. 
Where's the blue charger? Poof. Gone. <clears throat> it's gone. And oh my gosh. Uh, it's just aggravating. Very aggravating. These mobile products are aggravating. They really are. They're just crazy and how everybody kind of wants these things, but yet, what's the value of them? Ah, pretty ridiculous in all reality. Sad. Truly really sad on what I should have kept versus what I kept on those GT500s. I would have been better off keeping GT500s over these freaking Mopars. These, these things, nobody wants them. I'm not lying. You think I'm lying about that? I haven't even disclosed to you the number that they gave me on that Dodge Charger. That red eye, supposedly, be so lucky to get a red eye. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, just if you follow my channel, you're going to be a richer p person, and you're going to look a lot smarter. Because you can just use me for the stupid things that I do, and how I just get caught up and buy stuff. And it's the stupidest thing in the world in the end. And fortunately, I make good money, you know, but I'm not that rich. I mean, i got to pay my bills, and i got to go to work every day, so it's not like... I have this, uh, you know, big old fat checking account where I can just go disappear and life will be good. That ain't my story. So, so anyway, so new, the new conversations, that's usually been my life, especially growing up. I was always kind of wanted to buy something new, but it wasn't really necessarily the way it always was. But what drives that, right? Why do people want the brand new vehicle? And I think most here would agree that because you want to be the first to drive it, you want to be the person that knows all the history of it. And you just don't really want to buy somebody else's problems, which in so many ways, um, that's true. I mean, very true, because sometimes people get rid of things that has a major problem, and they have the car facts, which, you know, you can only hope that that, in some ways, is uh, accurate. But at the same time, I'm going to get my stuff out here, keep you entertained looking at all the cars, and just trying to figure out what... I do to get each of these vehicles opened up, which that's not easy. And here's my nice new Ford um, Raptor 37. And one of my subscribers felt like, you know, I don't know if I would uh, buy that uh, that vehicle because of a, uh, it's a Canadian vehicle. And what's, you know, his thoughts were, hey, up there in Canada, they're back road nothing. Like you can't even imagine and probably truly, uh, you know, just beating the hell out of it. And I'm like, you know, it's possible. I don't disagree with that. Um, but the good news is I did get the 100,000 mile warranty. So I do have, it, it's right now a car has like 20, basically it's like 24,000 miles. So I bought the warranty that takes it to 100,000. Yeah, most people are like, yeah, right. You're going to keep that vehicle to 100,000 miles. But here's the thing. I don't disagree with people having the feeling is, I'd rather buy something new because then I really know what the vehicle really is versus buy something used. But the challenge, too, is buying a new vehicle today is very expensive. But a challenge also has been to buy a used vehicle. It's been very expensive as well. So it's been challenging, as we all know, that uh, you go out and buy a new used vehicle like I'm buying this here. And, and just not so long ago, you'd pay the same price and possibly more than you did for uh, the actual really retail price. And you see now here in the sun, this is a really good hit on this vehicle. You can kind of see this antimatter blue, but this is where it starts showing all the potential defects in the vehicle. But I think they cleaned it up pretty well. And overall, I mean, I bought this truck here, and if you go over here to this Ford F-250 Tremor that I bought used, this truck's pretty beat up. I mean, and I even told my guys, on the trade, I told them, I was, you know, full disclosure, said, look, this is not the Iceman's original truck. Somebody else owned this truck, and it's got some imperfections in it, especially the bed of the truck is uh, kind of really kind of beat up. So I'm bringing a truck that isn't like what I usually bring, which is pretty flawless, and this thing has like 43,000 miles on it. But like yesterday, I took that Dodge Charger to that dealership. They didn't even test drive it. They just know who I am. <laughs> Alex, my buddy, he just knows that I give him stuff that's good. So, back over here to the new, the used. Yeah, for me, uh, well, I love a brand new 37 Raptor. That was my goal. If you're watching my channel, I really tried to pull that off. But we just couldn't get the right people and the right circumstances to make it really make sense. And 
it starts getting expensive. And I'm no fool. I mean, I'm no fool to what goes on in the car negotiation. So they want a $79,000 for this car. Now, if you built this truck out from Ford right now and optioned it out, it would probably come in at like $88,000. Maybe ninety one dollars because it has this Rhapsody blue interior. That's a $2,000 upgrade. It has the carbon fiber, you know, the stickers. Does it actually have the carbon? Yeah, it has the carbon fiber, you know, dash, interior. That stuff all starts adding up the price of this vehicle. The Canadian price was $111,000. So my ex my thoughts were, this is definitely like a $91,000, $94,000 vehicle that you would price out as a new vehicle. And once again, here's this blue, this blue interior. I really love this feel. And the seats aren't showing like anywhere. I mean, pretty nice for a truck to be uh, put in service in February of 2022. That's my birthday month, February. And whoever owned it, I mean, the truck really is a clean truck. So there's definitely a meticulous person. I'm sure that the dealership had to maybe clean up some flaws. But once again, it was $79,000 for me. I was hoping to go to seventy-five dollars on it just to feel like you really get the deal. But it, it then comes in to what are you giving me? I mean, that, that's, what, that's what it turns into. So you get this deal done. So here we are. Once again, in the truck, anybody out there that wants to kind of see the truck. And and uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, this truck here, I have the key in my pocket. And sometimes you open it up, it kind of lights up. And this one doesn't necessarily do that. And let's just kind of for a second here with my coffee, before I spill my coffee everywhere, let's just kind of turn it on and see this here. It has this automatic, so I don't even know that. So this has the auto exit and blah, blah, blah. So... Get up in here and just turn all that stuff off. I'm blown away at <laughs> this thing saying I'm getting 16 miles per gallon. It's the strangest thing. This vehicle here so feels more powerful than my last Raptor. How long does that last? I don't know. Um, but I mean, it's just really weird on how this has a bigger tire package and this feels more powerful than my black 2022 wrapper that I traded because it was getting like 14 miles a gallon. And I just really love that power boost. And that power boost is more powerful than this truck in some ways. This V6 motor is a 450 horsepower, like 510 foot, pound, uh, foot pounds of torque. That's a 430 horsepower and 550 foot pounds of torque. So it's like a 20 horsepower difference but it's like a 40 uh, foot-pounds torque more in that truck. That truck there feels more potent than this truck does. But it's not the, uh, the Raptor product. So, which means it doesn't have the big-ass tires. doesn't have that Raptor suspension. I mean, it gets pretty in-depth. Once you really start going over this vehicle, of this vehicle compared to this vehicle, I mean, there's a big difference in these vehicles because of the suspension components and the drivetrain. And, but this just has a, a cooler look. I mean, I really do like my, my, uh, that's interesting. So I left the power on, right? That's what I did. I thought I didn't, or did I? I did. So that just told me, hey, Mr. Iceman, you left your power on. The car talks. You see, it has an automatic uh, in and out, easy exit in and out. I kind of like that, and I don't kind of don't like that. Here's some scratches I can see in the paint right now. So, you know, once again, as you go out and all of us, I think, initially you say, I want to buy a new vehicle. I'm not going to say everybody. I think a lot of people will be more on the page of, I want to find a really nice used vehicle because I can get a really good price and a really good deal. And that's why I'm talking about this morning because yesterday was the used conversations and we focused on how many used cars I've bought lately. And I focused on how I'm trying to buy a used Raptor 37. Even though I sort of questioned myself, maybe I should buy the new 37 from Tedford Ford. But we just couldn't get the numbers to make sense. And hey, if Shaq, you're watching my channel from Tedford Ford, really cool guy. Uh, Alex actually reached out to him because he is a former uh, employee with he worked with at Coon Showing Ford. And he, uh, 
he actually congratulated me on the purchase of his truck. And I thought that's very professional and very nice of him to do that because I'm sure he wanted the 37 deal on the black one at his location, brand new, to get the deal go down. We just never could uh, make that kind of make sense. And for Alex, for what he did for me, he did an incredible uh, job in as far as trying to get this all to make sense. And for me, I had to really come to sense, you know, do I keep the Tremor truck? I just love that truck. It's just such a good truck. And for the Mopar product, <coughs> very disappointing. That Dodge Charger, I mean, I have no problem sharing all the stories and information on what goes on. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just whatever. I'm already crazy as it is, as anybody watches my channel. But the blue Dodge Charger, 2021 Red Eye, that used to sit back here where now the Gold Rush does, that vehicle was a really nice car. I bought it with like 4,500 miles on it. Well, I put like 2,300 miles on it. And a year later, I bought it, I believe, October of last year, I believe, of uh, 2022. And I paid 88 grand for that car. Uh, the negative on that car was I had to trade something to get something. So for Ford, I gave up my Grabber Blue Ford Mustang Mach E. Uh, the Joe, the gentleman that worked for me, drove a lot. And, uh, and so we gave that up and I got the charger. So there was negative equity put in that damn car. Well, then the day I didn't really worry about that because as we know, the end of the run of these Mopar products are coming down the home stretch. Now, Alex yesterday tried to justify the number on that blue charger by saying that they're hearing rumors that Dodge is not stopping production of this car. I'm like, nah, you're, <laughs> you're going down the wrong path. Dodge is done building these cars at the end of this year, and they're moving on to a whole new different platform. But he's claiming there's rumors out there that they just may keep it going just a little longer. I don't know. I do know that the market has changed. Um, yeah, it's, cha it's changed really bad. Uh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing $65,000, $70,000 uh, wholesale market on those red eyes. So anybody who's watching my channel, if you're in the market for a nice, really cool product, you better get it right now. Don't go to the car dealership per se. I mean, in some way you can get into these auctions or meet the right guy who knows how to uh, pick these cars up. They're going to start picking these things up for a dime on a dollar. So you be like, oh, get the hell out of here. Well, uh, Coons Baltimore Ford that sold me that blue car a year ago, they put a 70, uh, I think it was 73. I think they put seventy-three thousand dollars, basically uh, close to ten grand less than what they gave me at this for this truck here. So they gave me eighty-two five for that blue charger to buy a truck. Now I'm no fool. This is a used truck. They've got it at the highest price. Did they pay sixty-five grand for this thing? Seventy grand? I don't know. Did they pay seventy-five? I don't know. But I know it's all about the numbers. So did. Alex just inflate my trade substantially because he had room to move this. And he knows once he gets that charger in the market he's in, he can maybe get 85 out of it, 89 out of it. I don't know. I mean, that's not my um, business. That's his business. But the whole point is, wow, talk about taking a spanking. I mean, talk about taking a spanking. Man, be unbelievable for the Mopar product. And earlier... Last spring, I came to closure. I should get rid of my two GT500s and keep the Mopar products because they would probably have better value. How wrong am I? The GT500s are still very healthy. The GT500s I sold last spring, I got every bit of money for those things and I paid for them. I mean, so, I mean, wow, wow. These things here, these things here, these, 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 these red eyes, these Hellcats, they're tanking like you can't believe. So, but you got to say, when does it reverse sell? I don't know. I don't know. And that's why for me, I'm borderline. It's like, you know what? The gold rush didn't go bye-bye. It's a huge debt. To so continue to sit on that car, to wonder if the car, hey, Keefy boy, to wonder if that car is going to um, get great value. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm very happy with these cars because there's so much less money. That car payment, that car there is half of what that car payment is over there. That car, car payment here, um, it's at least, 
Uh, $700 a month less than that blue one I had. Yes. I mean, it's it's bad. It's wow. Yikes, right? And I just love that Super B. So I'm like the page of, hey, let's just keep it more simple. Don't need to have the highest output power. I mean, I've had all those. And to some people, I'm sure, like, you should have bought the Raptor R. Yeah, yeah, right. Sure, sure, the car. <laughs> yeah, $150,000 for the Raptor R. Brand new. Raptor R, it's, it's, it's 111, 121. And then once you option it out, um, it turns, I should say, not so much option it out. Once the dealer gets one in stock that someone didn't order or walked away from order, they want a 25 grand. They want a buck fifty for these uh, trucks. People pay a buck forty, buck fifty. I've watched it all day long at Coons Baltimore Ford, and so, yeah, right. Raptor R, cool, but eh, this truck's plenty fast. I mean, and then one of my subscribers or one of the people who watched my channel, he uh, viewed in, he complimented me on the purchase of the thirty-seven, and what he said was, he has the uh, the Ram trucks as well, so he has the best of both worlds. And I was like, that's pretty cool. So that's dangerous. So now he's got me thinking, oh, great. Yeah, here we go. Oh, great. What's the next mission eventually? You know, I don't think it'll be this year. But yeah, okay, I, I crossed the path to get the Ram TRX. Eh, I don't know. I just, Ram TRX, I just, I love the way this truck drives. And even he said that in his comment. The, the Raptor has a nicer suspension, nicer ride. But the TRX just has a badass exhaust and a badass um, rocks down the road. So, if you want the badass exhaust and thing just rolls down the road, then the TRX. But I think if you really want the ride, I think that's the vehicle to get. Now, a person reached out and said this morning, funny. He's funny. He was saying all the antics I'll do to start my channel, and he said probably the Braptor Raptor, which I don't disagree. Having the Braptor and the Raptor um, combination here and kind of being comparing the two of them, what they are and everything, I thought that's a pretty cool idea. Because uh, they're so different, but yet they're so same because they're, they're the Raptor family. This is really called the Ford Bronco Raptor. People call it the Braptor for the short abbreviation of the B. Replace it, and uh, you have the Braptor. And so for this car here, it's a great vehicle. I love this vehicle. But it's such a cold-sensing vehicle, meaning it's so dark. And sure, you can pop the panels off. And, yeah, you're going to have a lot of light in here when it's 25 degrees out. Yeah, that'll be fun, won't it? So, when you're in this vehicle here, it's such a more dark experience. It's the closet effect. And we can turn this car on here. And I can kind of get up in here and just show you. Get up in this truck here. And this is a much smaller platform vehicle. But believe it or not, this priced out against a Raptor is more money. So, if you want a Raptor 37 and you want... Um, I should say the Raptor and a Raptor 37. This will price out higher. <laughs> Isn't that something? This will be the more expensive vehicle. So we get up in the vehicle here. You have to use this step because it's such a high vehicle. But you get in here, and it's such a. Uh, uh, it's just reschedule. Huh. That's cool. So so this here. I mean, you close the door. I mean, it's such a, a dark. It's just dark vehicle. But it's a really cool vehicle. I mean, I can't emphasize enough that this thing here is a blast, but it's a noisy vehicle. Uh, it's in so many ways a gas hog. Um, it's, I mean, it's it's a fun vehicle. I love the vehicle. But if I had to make choices because of finances of which one I could have, I would prefer the, the truck over this because the truck is so much more versatile and usability versus if you go, you know, you go with this vehicle here and you want to haul wood down the road or you want to move something or whatever it may be that just is such a more practical vehicle if somebody's wanting to ride in the back with you uh in the back of this truck here i mean look at this here i mean look right i mean so if somebody's gonna be on a long trip it's not that bad but it comes into okay i don't know about you but if i'm the kid or if i'm the friend and let's go on a road trip um i'm all day long on this back end Plus, I have heated seats. I think it even has, does it even have cooled seats? Um, it doesn't? I can't tell. I think it does. I can't even tell. Okay, so that's how bad it is when it comes to me. All these different vehicles of what, what you have, what you don't have. It definitely has heated seats. <laughs> it's a big-ass bed to hold all your gear. 
Now, another one of my subscribers, Andrew Bikerbug. Hey, how you doing there, Andrew? Appreciate all the comments and how he weighs in. He's continuing to hit me up and saying, why don't you get a why don't you get a Rivian? Why don't you get a Rivian? And you know what? The Rivian's a cool truck. I've driven that truck. I actually did a review on it. And I figured anybody who watched that video would probably not like me much anymore because I was very I was very critical of the Rivian. I just don't think the Rivian is a truck. I really think the Rivian is more of this with a pickup bed on it. Uh, and some be like, well, how do you, you know, how can you really compare your Bronco to the Rivian? All right, maybe I should compare the Rivian to more of my Jeep Gladiator. And, and, and because it's such a smaller platform, it doesn't have the amenities or the space. So for Andrew, if you're wondering, I don't buy a Rivian, it's because I just don't feel like it's going to work for me. I work out on my trucks all the time, and there's never, there's never enough, enough space in all of my, you have no idea, uh, when I work on my trucks, between the back seat being full, the freaking bed of the truck being full, I mean, I have lots of stuff going on, and it's just never, I can't see that Rivian really, um, you know, working out for me um, to be able to uh, work out of on a regular basis. And I know there's a side pocket thing here that will pull out as a drawer, it's just too small. It's too small. And then I just do not like how in the front of the vehicle, it has nothing like this. It says nothing. <laughs> it's a very small console with little slide out cup holders. You know, I've got stuff just everywhere. I mean, I just, <laughs> so for me, then I've got my, my kid and the German Shepherd. So Rivian, really cool vehicle, but it doesn't fit my lifestyle for it to make sense for me, because when I buy these vehicles, I do work on them. <laughs> People are like you, kid. I work out of them. I, I use all these vehicles, and I enjoy riding around them and doing my business and taking care of things. And so, I'm just. And then, for the record, I have a Rivian. I've got a Ford F-150 Lightning truck. That when do I drive it? I mean, what's that all about? Um, I bought a brand new Lightning only to keep it for a month to turn around and sell it. Why? It's just that disconnect from that ice age. And that's why I thought this new conversation would be really appropriate today. Because that's the challenge that's in front of us more than ever. That they're bringing so much new stuff to us. Um, new technology. New laws. And so many people I think are just like, I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want it. And, and the people don't want to hear that. That's like the resistance. The resistance, the ice age is staying strong at COPE 28. Oh my gosh, you gotta see what's going on over there. Which we'll get more into that as we kind of wrap up. The Raptor 37, always wanted this truck color because it gives it a black look, but then it gives it a really cool um, blue, that antimatter blue. And you just have no idea how many times I've tried to get a Raptor 37 and it never plays out. And so, I'm sure the Mopar community be like, you're freaking stupid. You sold your red eye, and that thing one day would be worth so much money. Well, if you know who I am, I don't keep things forever. That's just not who I am. <laughs> that's, not, that's not who I am. I like to have my fun, and I really thought that that Mopar Charger red eye, red eye product would, would have at least paid me what I paid for it. Or I really thought it would be a buck twenty-five buck 50 card i'm sure in the right environment the right circumstances the right auction the right amount of people drinking kool-aid that would play out and that's kind of how it always seems to end um here we're back here new i bought a brand new indian motorcycle called a pursuit and for those who watch my channel i finally got the final letter from indian last night for me to write an acceptance letter of their offer to finally put this thing to bed, which hopefully, uh, if it doesn't happen this week, it happens next week for the resolution of that motorcycle. And meanwhile, as a guy on the Indian Motorcycle Forum, how do you handle this? There's a guy on the Indian Motorcycle Forum that is excited as all get out about finding a brand new Indian Pursuit. And how do, you, how do I, I mean, how do I as an individual withhold the negativity of what that guy has no idea what's going on. I'm amazed. I'm very amazed that he is uh, 
clueless, but this guy is sincerely, he's really wanting to uh, buy a brand new Indy Pursuit premium package. Actually, he I guess he's down there in Florida because he's looking at that iMoto um, down there in St. Petersburg, which I've been to that dealership many times down in St. Pete, uh, Florida. And uh, come on, pups. It's Daddy. He's going to appear in the office. It's cold. I should have turned the heater on earlier. Right hamstring. Still feeling that damn thing from all that work on Sunday, which, ah, as you progress in life, you think you can do so much. That can you do much, right? So, heat. There's a little girl in her seat. Got the gang. And, uh, wow. It's a lot of work to get these deals to go down. It is so much work. If you kind of really watch my channel. And you've got to remember, you're not seeing everything. You're only seeing parts because you'd be watching a video forever. I mean, I get all that. You would be literally watching a video forever if uh, <laughs> you watched me the whole time. So between videoing and me negotiating and me talking, it is so much work. But back to this guy on the Indian Motorcycle Forum, he's extremely excited. And hey, if Emily is there this morning, Emily actually wanted two more stickers. I gave her two stickers. So good morning there to you, Emily, who did a great job of uh, helping get the car, the truck sold. And uh, so hope she had a good workout last night. She was at the gym after work, after 9 o'clock. Emily, in that video, if you watch my video, Emily is a, an Olympian martial arts expert. And it's just it's really so cool. And she loves to exercise and, and work out, but she has to work long hours. And she's so dedicated to this stuff. She works those long car dealership hours. And she goes to the gym after she gets off work. She's going to the gym after 9 o'clock at night. I'm like, how do you go to sleep? She's like, right, how do I go to sleep? Because she's all wound up. So anyways, family's watching my channel. And I told her, I think you probably have the best parents anybody could have in the world. Because you just see that through people. I just... I'm such a people person, I interact with so many people, and you just see the people that are such great people, and you just know that they came from such a great family, and I know there's people out there that can say, yeah, I didn't have that, but that's not saying you're not a great person, I'm sure you're excellent, like you're probably even stronger than all of us, if you didn't have a mother or father that took care of you and you turned out right in this physical world, it was very challenging. So, the guy at the Indian Pursuit, so what I did, I, I sent him a personal conversation. And all I said is, hey, do you, so many words, I said, do you know of the steering wobble on the Indian Pursuit? And I just shared with him that I bought one with that issue. And if you want any more, any more information, you know, please be, feel free to reach out to me. And otherwise, you know, good luck and, uh, on your, you know, purchase of your Pursuit. I'm thinking, no way. In fact, what's interesting is good old Chris, who took his shopping cart and ran, ran, ran into me. My daughter Julia says I screamed in, in Costco when I was going with my shopping cart. And he came out of nowhere and slammed into me. I mean, it's, it's like, I screamed? I probably went, ah! So, uh, anyways, he's like, you're going to get the new Indian Pursuit, the Indian uh, Elite Series. And it's a great paint scheme, great looking bike. And because apparently Twigs, anybody out there want to, apparently Twigs is getting in an Indian Elite here very shortly. I thought those things would be out till later this spring or midsummer. So I told him, no, I would not do it. I'm now concerned if I buy another Indian, especially the Challenger or Pursuit um, frame, I'd be concerned I'd get the same thing I just got rid of. So I'm like, no, I would. I mean, all reality, I'm really on the fence of selling my Indian Challenger. Um, so, if somebody gets the right number, I think we'll go bye bye. But why buy another Indian? I'm like, uh uh. Not, that, not the Challenger and Pursuit series. Now, Chieftain, different story. Roadmaster, you know, there's others. Yeah, but I, I've had my day with Indians. So I'm just kind of burned out. That's what happens to me. I just think you kind of cross the bridge. But even though you probably watch a video of me down the road buying another damn Indian, but ah, I don't know. That's very, uh, very debatable. It's now about Honda. Even for me, a Honda. I've already had the Honda Goldwing. I've already had now two Hondas, brand new. One used Honda sitting in my trailer. And would I buy another new Honda? Yeah, probably. They get the new, 
the new airbag edition in. Chris doesn't like the airbag because it doesn't have this. He just says, I'm like, you know, anything can maybe help you live another day with technology. With that airbag and that bike, that's where I am. You know, you're on a motorcycle and God forbid you come off that bike, you get hit. You might hope and pray that you live another day because anybody who rides motorcycles knows it's very dangerous out there and because of all the crazy drivers. But now back to new, we're in such, I mean, does anybody here really feel like since Joe Biden became the president of the United States in January 2021, I mean, do you feel like there's just been so many new agendas? I mean, I've talked about it now for, you know, not for a long time on my channel, that there's so many new agendas that seem to be in so many ways um, something that people just don't really want. But yet, the new agendas are growing at a rapid pace, but yet, I'm reading that 3,800 car dealerships have written to the city administration that they have to slow down this demand of all these EV vehicles and all these strict new guidelines. I mean, that's factual. They said 4,000, but to be the nitty-gritty, it's like 3,882 car dealerships, new car dealerships. Yes, it's more about the new, because the new car dealerships, the ones are being forced to get these new EVs, and they're not selling. So they're writing to this administration saying, we got to back this, you know, really new laws you are enforcing, and we need to kind of slow it down. Now, is the federal government going to listen to it? And I thought I was thinking myself the other day, talk about something that's not really fair. I mean, think this through. Um, when you go to buy a new car, you don't know, get me wrong, manufacturers can offer incentives and offer rebates. But when you go buy a new electric vehicle, um, the taxpayers are giving the rebates back to the, uh, the person who buys the electric vehicle. So when people buy, remember, it has to be new. You can't buy it used. So like that Ford F-150 Lightning truck that I bought used last year, I can't take a tax incentive for that vehicle. And the other guy that bought it can, but I don't even know if he can because he didn't keep it long enough. So I'm not even sure in that real law of, uh, of that when you do that. So what I don't qualify for is I was an original owner. Is I didn't buy it new. I bought it barely used. I bought it freshly new. Freshly novel. Should we be using the word today novel? That that we are we live in the age of the novelty because things are so new and refreshed and so so really think it through that people are going by a new EV vehicle, their uh, their reward is that the taxpayers are paying them to buy a car. I mean in so many ways. I mean, their reward is that the Ice Age is paying for the roadway infrastructure for them to drive their car. I mean, once again, this isn't, for me, money to attack anybody has electric vehicle. I'm just saying, if you look at the realm of things, I mean, if you look at a lot of Musk, the amount of money he's collected off of us Ice Age people to create what he uh, he has, it's, uh, it's beyond believable. And even, I guess, there's new Neuralink update. Lately... I just really been so busy on a mission. I get on a mission, and until I accomplish that mission, or come to closure, I can't accomplish that mission. I just get fixated on something, and I just don't let go until I get it done. And so, as far as me watching like the news and all this, the X, I really have not spent much any time at all, at all, in any of those uh, those platforms and the the. the the news. I was just always out in the field working or chasing a deal for a car. And for the record, if you go back and review, you'll see that I was trying to get a Nissan Z. I was more on the page of buying a Nissan Z before the Raptor truck kind of popped up. And then and before that, I was on the page of getting a, Rap, getting a Wrangler 392, which <clears throat> they couldn't uh, get that deal done. Apparently, that Wrangler 392 is still sitting out that dealership, apparently. Um... But now you can talk about the new car sales. And that's all you hear about now is people are not buying new cars. Well, I think they are, but I don't think they're paying, you know, buying them at the same pace. But I think the used car sector seems to be still pretty healthy. It just seems like the used car dealers. I mean, I can, I'm sure there's people out there that will say, yeah, but our used car, you know, we're, we're not seeing what we used to see. It's more challenging. Um, but at the same time, up here where I am, it just doesn't. It doesn't stop. Coons Baltimore Ford, they were slammed yesterday. They were overwhelmed because on Saturday, 
they couldn't sell any cars because the Asbury Automotive Group did the official transition this past weekend. And so no, no, you know, monies could be exchanged. So if you want to buy a vehicle up in Baltimore or any of the Coon stores, you couldn't do it till Monday. So Derek, my sales guy, he, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he says that, uh, that they were overwhelmed with uh, customers yesterday because of Saturday they couldn't sell a car. They could only show a car. Hmm. It's the same old thing. I mean, I mean, I'm with anybody out there that's like, yeah, but, 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 I don't know. I mean, who knows? I mean, it's just eh. the new, the new policies, the new guidelines. So um, that's what I kind of wrap it up with that. A lot of talking. If you really watch my videos, you watch how much time I talk. If you see all these videos, I had like four videos yesterday. I mean, if you want to talk about, plus I had, I had five videos yesterday. You know how many hours of talking and content that is for me? <laughs> I mean, and yet I watch these other guys that drive around their truck and car, and they walk they walk the parking lot, and they tell everybody the world's coming to an end, and they'll get you know it's it's just it's just incredible that the people, I guess people like new fear. Is that what it is? Maybe that's what it's all about. You have to create new fear. There's this one guy, John Williams, that I. Subscribe to this guy's channel. This guy posts new fear videos all day long. All day long. It's all day long. Every video is new fear con is new fear content. So I guess that's the trick in the YouTube world is you got to create new fear um, videos. And I think those that do it have a lot of a lot of subscribers and get a lot of hits. So whatever. I just enjoy making videos and all, so uh, that's why I do it, and that's why I'm kind of leaving it at that. So you're probably saying, now, Mr. Iceman, what's the next adventure? Right. What is the next adventure? We're only 13 days from Christmas. Oh, my gosh. Beyond believable. Yeah, what Christmas presents have I already bought myself? Right. Uh, hopefully, the next adventure is I get that Indian motorcycle um, resolved, and they hand me a nice fat check. Uh, maybe somebody wants to buy a nice Indian Challenger for a nice Christmas present. Maybe that would be a pretty cool thing. And uh, and then, you know, we're kind of going into next year. So do I really think that another deal comes in this year? I can't see that happening. We're now going into next year. But what would it be? I mean, sincerely, the, the Z thing, eh, the Z thing just isn't meant to be. I get that. But for me, now it's like, okay, what would be the next thing on my agenda for me to go after on a vehicle that I would think that would make sense. Ram X, eh, you know, eh, I was just, eh, you know, I don't know. I just don't get that excited about that Ram TRX. What is that all about? I just know it's because you push on the gas pedal, you get the roar, and the, the, the truck goes really fast, and there you go. And there you go. But the ride of it is nothing, in my view. I mean, I'm just telling you, I mean, if, if I, why would I? be saying the, the Ford Raptor truck rides better than the Ram TRX. I mean, what comes from that? But I'm telling you, it rides better. It's a nicer riding truck. It's a nicer package. If that thing had the Raptor R, the V8 motor setup, then oh yeah, it's a whole different story there, but it's a whole ton of freaking money. So yeah, so what? Where do we go next? And the, and the next Dodge Daytona Charger, we don't really know much about it, so, is that thing in with uh, hands reach? Nope. You know, you're now going probably to end of next year, probably for that. Probably go into the late winter. I'd say late winter, early spring, maybe. They do a reveal, maybe summer, whatever it is. And then be so lucky to get one if it's this badass ice vehicle, hybrid setup. Uh, so, I can't see that. GT500, I think that's probably 2025. I could see them maybe revealing that maybe next summer, possibly. But here I've got a dark horse that's uh, I'm gonna mod. So you know, do I really go from the GT500? And eh. plus, it's gonna be a buck fifty. Then others be like, get a Z06. These things are very expensive. They're just so. I mean, you're over the hundred. I mean, it, it, it's just like yikes. And yeah, I could definitely sell a bunch of cars to you know accommodate just having that one. I mean, that's always possible. So with me, you just never know. Really, what I'm really more kind of on the focus on is what next 
touring bike do I get that I really feel like could be a good package for me? And Harley, in January, is going to release a new model line. I think it's going to copy off the CVO. I've talked about it a gazillion times. So I'm really intrigued to see that play out. And, and then the new Honda colors are pretty cool. So there's a few things. I would think that would be more of the potential. It would be more about the motorcycles than, the per se, the car aspect of things kind of going forward. So anyways, leave it at that. Huge conversation yesterday, new conversation today. And what are we talking about tomorrow? Yeah, what, what is the theme tomorrow as I try to create content? And I didn't really go much into the COPE 28, but it's a rat's nest. So over there in Dubai, I mean, what's, what's classic is the, the head of the state, basically oil ministry, uh, whatever you, how you phrase all this stuff, these are the guys that are kind of got the uh, got the pen and paper and writing down what they think makes sense and doesn't. So it's very challenging right now because more than ever the the rich fossil fuel guys are dominating the conversations and it's irritating a lot of the other non fossil fuel lovers. So there's this gathering of all the countries. I think it's 200, I think, people are there and are trying to come to closure of what, you know, the future guidelines, you know, the Paris Accord or whatever it is, the Paris Agreement for the carbon footprint of the world, what makes sense, what will work, blah, 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 blah. But the key individuals kind of dictating what's going on more so than ever, I think, in modern times is the fossil fuel guys are at the table and they're pushing harder than ever that you just can't continue to create this new baloney. Yeah, the new baloney is what it is. I mean, more than ever, I mean, how do you hold back on all this, you know, the mother nature, the world, you know, the, the man's footprint? Yeah. What did this place look like a million years ago when nobody, when no man was walking around? I mean, didn't mother nature just evolve on our own? I mean, does anybody... I mean, does, does anybody here kind of get this stuff? That, that the, the mother nature earth is bigger than we realize, and it's just going to kind of do what it's going to do anyways. I can still remember back in 2006 and seven, all these hurricane experts, I mean, this is factual, all these hurricane experts were predicting there would be like 10 or 20 major hurricanes. I'm not embellishing here in that Florida, you know, the Gulf, it would be horrendous hurricanes, but many, 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 many because of the global warming and global uh, climate. I'm talking about 2006, 7, 8. I'm talking about, they weren't saying 10 or 20 years from now. They are saying the next summer, the next summer, next summer, that these three, four hurricanes that usually kind of come through Florida, that Gulf each year or five, it's going to be horrendous. It's going to be 10 or 20 in storms we've never even seen. Yeah, right. This is like me hurry back in the 70s that by the 80s we'd have no more oil in the world. I mean, I'm not making that up. If you're at my age, you can say, yeah, I remember those stories back in the 70s. We were told by the 80s, 1980s, we would run out of oil in this world. Yes, that's factual. All right, leave it at that. Hey, everybody. Hope everybody has a great day. It's a cold time of year up here. I'm totally bundled up. And let me go to work, right? I'm going to go to work to pay the freaking bills. This ain't cheap. It ain't cheap, right? i got to dig up some new money. Wow. Yeah, I'll do that. All right, God bless. Stay safe. Have a great day. Stay tuned.